So today's lecture is on linear models, linear regression and those things. So the first example that we're doing is from this mass package, the data set is called survey and this is what that data set looks like, okay? So the, uh, when we say that we are going to plot, so what this data set has is the heights of uh, males and females uh, in I think centimeters or, or uh, yeah, centimeters and the writing hand width span, the writing hand, whether it's a right hand person, left hand person and some other attributes, okay? So what we are saying is that first we just, when we uh, plot the, the writing hand span, like how big the hand of a person is and their heights, you can see the data spread out like this. So just looking at this data, we can feel or we can see that whenever like the hand span increases, the, uh, the height of the person has also increased, right? So there is some kind of correlation, right? That we saw in the previous lecture, uh, which I couldn't come because I was having severe migraines, headaches, blah, blah. And I didn't want to deal with you guys. So I said, okay, I'll just record the class. But anyway, um, so the, and the relationship appears to be somewhat linear. Linear in the sense that if you draw a straight line through this data, which you can with a ABS line is the function, so absolute line, if you draw that here, it can go through the data almost linearly, right? So that will be a linear increasing pattern. In most of the examples that are here uh, on the slides and in the book, the uh, relationships are linearly increasing. It will not always be like that. It may be decreasing linearly or non-linearly, but non-linear comes later. But for this class, there is a, we are talking about linear relationships. Okay, linear meaning like a straight line. Okay, the line slope can be like, uh, closer to 90, less than 90, 60. So the slope of the line or the rate at which the data is, is uh, correlated may be different, but they are linear in the sense that either they are increasing linearly or decreasing linearly. Linearly meaning that if you draw a straight line through this data, you can see that it's uh, most of the points lie near that line, okay? So what we are going to do is, so to assess the strength of the relationship, we can do those correlation coefficients that we did in the last class, right? So these regression lines, so again, this is 501 stuff, like uh, I'm going quickly going to go over this because some of you got what, uh, what was it, credits and some forgot, whatever. But anyway, uh, so the purpose of any linear regression model is to come up with a function or an estimate of this form in which one variable is the dependent variable and the other is the independent variable, okay? So dependent and independent in statistical terms are quite hard, saying that uh, like they're very strongly related. So people often do not use these words. They use response or predictor. Like a variable is a predictor and that predicts the other one is a response or the outcome. Okay, so some books call it response, some call it outcome. I think in our book, they call it uh, response, I think, right? But the other one is the predictor or the independent variable, meaning that based on this variable, is this variable increasing, decreasing, or how correlated it is, right? So the general equation is this, in which your dependent is on the left side, or your response. So then you have something called an intercept, the slope coefficient, and the predictor variable, plus some random error, right? Because it's again statistics, it's uh, uh, estimated value, so there is some error associated with it. It's not an uh, exact science. So statistics is not an exact science like biology, physics, etc. It's a 
like a predictive science it's not exact but anyway so these betas beta naught and one are called regression coefficients okay <coughs> so the general concept of this equation is what we're trying to do is that this intercept variable b naught right so r uh, So if, if you just look at this, forget this error term. So we have y equals b0 plus b1 times x, right? So what this essentially means is that if your value of x is 0, let's say if your predictor becomes 0, right? So if x becomes 0, what does y become? b0, right? So if x is 0, so this component goes away, you only have? B naught, which is the called the intercept. Intercept meaning that the outcome or this variable will have a specific value if your x is zero. Okay, and then this b beta one determines the change in the mean outcome. Okay, so the, it's not the outcome; it's the mean value of x. Why we say mean is because when a data is like this. The data will have a mean, right? So our beta 1 or our slope is tied to that mean value, not a given value of x, not a specific value of x. It's the mean value of x, okay? For which one unit increase in the predictor can be determined. I'll tell you like when we get the result, then it becomes easier to understand what this one unit means, okay? But anyway, so given a specific data like data set so let's say given this data the best we can do or what we can do is that we use that data to estimate our regression parameters or coefficients these coefficients betas are the things that we estimate and this then is called you are fitting your linear model okay so then you're saying that based on whatever data is available to us we have found a specific equation and that equation fits this data okay so that's called fitting the linear model and when we uh, fit that line or slope that base this is the slope this is the mean value then oops so our main aim is to find a line that goes through the center of this data right so our aim essentially is to reduce that error term in the end, okay? Or the mo or any uh, regression models aim is to reduce these errors. Uh, in the and that's why this is called like least uh, squares regression, meaning that the squares of the error from that model that you found is least, okay? So the best line that fits is one in which the error terms from that specific line are reduced. So if this is your line and your data points are here, so you measure these errors uh, to the line or to that model, and you say that these errors have to be, when you square them, add them, summation, this, that, it has to be the least, okay? Because one line can give you one result, the other line can give you uh, other distances for, for the same points, right? So if this line is better or this line is better, depends on which line has the less number of errors or the least uh, squares regression, okay? And then when we are talking about any model, any statistical model, we are talking about samples, right? So we're not talking about, so if you find a result in a sample, that same result may not apply to the population, right? Because if you do, let's say, a survey of 50, 50 people, those 50 people may have their own bias, biasedness and this and that. They may have other cultural backgrounds, this, that. If you talk another talk to another 50 people, they may give you a different result, right? 
So the same type of survey, uh, depending on two different types of samples, part of one big population may give you different results. Okay. So the best thing we do is that we fit the model to a given sample. Then based on the results, we decide whether our sample can be applied to the population or not. Okay. And that's what we're going to see. So, uh, so in, in what, what this equation is saying here is that these betas, when you find them, then it's the correlation times the standard deviation of y over x and this and that. So without going into the statistics, you get a uh, linear regression equation, right? For us, I mean, uh, for now, we don't care like how, what is behind them. Okay, you should already know that. If not, then go study that. But anyway, so what we are doing is, uh, like I said, our basic data set is we are trying to measure where, whether the person's writing hand span is, uh, you can say uh, affecting the outcome of the person's height. Like if a person has a bigger hand, is he taller? That's the question, right? So based on our data set, a linear regression model is fit through this command. So I write these things here as well. So you know on the left hand side is the response variable or the outcome or the dependent one. The right hand side is the independent one. And this is called the formula notation, right, which you have used in plots as well, like in those graphs, right. Uh, so the command is LM for linear model. So we are applying a linear model on a dependent variable, tilde sign independent variable, and then you say which data set it's coming from. And that's it. And it gives you a result in this variable. Okay. When you see this variable, you see something like this. Okay, so it's first of all, it says that I am coming from this function because you gave me this call and then are the results down here. So what are the results? You are getting that intercept and another value, right? So if you look at the equation, the first is the intercept and the other regression coefficient. So intercept is your beta naught that we just put in the equation here. So beta naught plus beta one times x from these values, right? So this is where or how you read this uh, beta one's effect. What we are saying here on beta one is that for every one centimeter increase in the hand span here, because remember x is the writing hand and under writing hand you see this value, right? So writing hand is this. So if your hand span increases by a single unit, since the data set has win, uh, hand spans in centimeters, the one unit is one centimeter, right? So we are saying that if your hand span size increases by one centimeter, then a student's height can increase by these many centimeters. So based on that one single unit increase, the height will increase by 3.117, same unit, which is centimeters. Clear? On the other hand, for this variable, the intercept, how do we read this is that the mean height of a student hand span of zero centimeters, if, meaning if x is zero, then this is the value of person's height. Meaning what? Can a person's hand span be zero? So we are saying that if a person has no hand, his height will be this much, which is which doesn't make sense, right? So usually this left hand side or you don't interpret this intercept value. We are only concerned or we only talk about this intercept or uh, sorry this uh, regression coefficients one unit increase. Okay so that's an important point to remember we only talk about this units one unit increase whatever units this 
was in we say that if this increases by one this is the amount that this variable will increase by okay now in this case both these variables have the same unit which is centimeters what if the y had a different unit then what then we all always go by the unit of y okay but anyway so when you run this linear model this does not give us much all it gave us is this value if i ask you uh, can this be applied to the population just looking at this can you say anything not really right and uh, for that we have to use this summary command summary if you saw in last lecture gives us these other things right it gives you these mean median of the residuals residuals are those error values okay but we are not concerned about errors it gives us in the coefficients now it's giving both coefficients in this format it's the same thing 3.117 but it's right under this intercept and each will have its own p-value right what was the uh, we'll come to the p-values later but first if you go down here there are two values r squared and adjusted r squared does anybody remember from 501 what these values mean how much of the actual Exactly. So, so the question that I asked that how much of it can be applied to the sample, like to the population from the sample, these values will give you that answer. Okay. So usually you can just look at the adjusted R square. Even if you look at multiple, it's the same thing, but people usually prefer adjusted R square. Okay. Because it's, it adjusts some variables and it gives, but almost always they're very close, right? Both, both are what? almost 36 percent right so what this 36 percent is saying is that 36 i am 36 percent confident that this result can be applied to the population is it good enough not really right it has to be 80 90 close more than some some threshold yeah usually whatever threshold you decide because in genetic medical cases, you have to be really close, right? Your confidence has to be really close to a 90, 100%. Otherwise, you'll say, okay, this works on mice. Feed it to humans, even if it's 35%. And half of your population dies, right? So in medical kind of cases, it really matters. For us, no. So this is that value whether it can apply to the population or, or not. Then, tell them I'm not in. <laughs> so the other thing is the p-value. What was the rule of the p-value from last class? If it's less than alpha, we reject null hypothesis. What does that mean here? Okay. So, so this is what it means here. So standardized values are reported, blah, blah. So let's read this thing. So remember we had null hypothesis and the alternative is what? That it's not null. Whatever is null, it's not that. In regression, our null hypothesis means, uh, what was it? That no effect, that there will be like the predictor has no effect on the response. Predictor has no effect on the response. So our not is saying that predictor hand size has no effect on your height. Okay. So that's a null hypothesis that it has no effect on the hand. The hand size or predictor has no effect on the response. That's all H null is saying. H null implies 
predictor has no effect on the response. Our predictor is hand size, right? So what we are essentially saying is that the hand size has no effect on the height of the person. P-value is what? e to the power minus 16, meaning it's what, 15 zeros then to, so it's way less than 0 0.05, which is our, so we reject null hypothesis, meaning that hand size does in fact have some effect. Yes? Lost? Okay. Uh, get it? Okay. So H naught is this thing. H naught says that predictor has no effect on the response. What's our predictor? Hand size. Response is height. So H naught becomes predictor has no effect on response. Hand size has no effect on height. When we look at the p-value, it's way less than alpha we reject H naught. So H alternative is that there is some relation or effect between uh, hand size and a person's height. Okay. Okay. And you can do the same thing for uh, other as well but that again doesn't make much sense because you're only talking about the intercept okay so we're only interested in this uh, the slope usually so that's all that this linear model is it you just run the model using this lm command this is the format you give the data and then interpreting these results is where the thing lies what's happened today let me check minus <laughs> okay so if you understand how you want you can read this you're done the assignment is done so can you please explain the syntax okay call me somebody anyway uh, syntax is right <laughs> I was joking <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> uh, some restaurant, I think. Anyway, so Sid, the question is this syntax? This syntax? This? Okay. So LM for linear model your response or your dependent variable goes on the left hand side tilde the predictor comes here that's it and then you say my data set is this so survey is the data set it will be your csv file or data frame name that you read your csv file into okay i think in the assignment i assignment is similar to this it's not based on an excel file it's based on a package which is just like this thing Yes. Okay. So up until now, this example was dealing with a continuous variable, heights, etc. Right? We can do the same thing with categorical variables. First, let's look at binary variables. That are of true, false, or uh, yes, no kind of form. Okay binary answer I shouldn't say true false because that's another thing uh, like 0 1 kind of values hmm? so for instance in the same data set the sex of the person whether it's male or female does it have any effect on the person's height Question is, are males in general taller in this data set? That's the question. Okay. So sex is a binary variable. Yes. Male or female. Okay. 
so then the, this is the question that is there a statistical evidence that a height of a student is affected by their sex okay the only thing to uh, first check is that these have to be in factors and that's what we are essentially checking here so this variable whatever that categorical variable binary variable is it needs to be defined as a factor if it's not you change it to as factor okay uh, so in this data set there are 118 males and 118 females okay so we are going to apply the same and if you look at the uh, linear model up here we are saying that apply this height the same linear model check whether height is affected by the person's sex or not and data set is this you get the summary of this variable this is what you get so intercept is this which comes down here in the equation slope is this it comes down here and if you read this variable right here it says sex male and it's 13.13 where did females go right that's the first question But if you read this equation, so I am saying a person's height and then equation is this. So the second value is about males. So just looking at this equation, what can you figure out? So a person's height is 165.6 something plus this part if the person is male. Yes? So what does that mean? What's the female part then? In other words, if the person is not a male, X becomes what? Zero. Right? So this whole value goes away. So this becomes part of the female's answer. So if it's the answer comes like this, this is one variable, the other is this. Right? So a fem person's height is this, and if the person is male, add this part to it. That's what this is saying. Okay? And by the way, so, so these values, these equations just give, have fitted the model. Why? Because then now we can ask a question that for a specific uh, x, give me the height right so so now i can ask is if a person is a male give me the average height can you give that when i say a person is a female give me the average height what's that 165.68 right if a person is a male what's the average height 165 plus 13 which is 178 something right so that's how you answer these questions adjusted r square is what 44 percent meaning what accuracy the accuracy of this data applying to the population is 44 percent okay you guys know that now so if there is a variable for gender in the data we just have variable for gender gender variable male or female in the data okay then we just run the model and assume that the model takes care of it. R care R of it. will take care of it. So we have to go with the assumption that if it's one, then it's male, otherwise it's female. No, 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 no. It depends here. If in the model, let's say here, if it was sex female in the answer, then that means this value is the male, the other is the female. So one is intercept, the other is slope. Whatever is the slope goes second. So we make no changes to the gender variable. Mm. R no, no. R, R takes care of it. So R, whatever R spits out as a result is what dictates this equation, right? And that's a good point that's coming next. So this is for binary types of variables, sex like males, females. You have only two options. What if you have multiple options for the same variable we are talking about? 
we are not talking more variables one variable has five options you are a smoker you are not chain smoker you are you smoke less you have cancer whatever uh, yeah <laughs> so we are talking about a single variable that can hold multiple values okay of this form that that same variable has these many options k can be anything greater than 2 if it's 2 it's the binary case if it's more than 2 it's this case okay what is this case if you remember from 501 which many of you skipped these types of variables have to be first coded into something called a dummy variable right so those dummy variables what they do is you code your data into something like this in R we don't have to do all these things I'm only showing you these things and they are not even in our book I'm only showing you this so you understand what's happening why right? because everybody can run an R command if you don't understand what's happening behind it there is no use because you cannot apply that to real data right so what happens is that for that variable if you have let's say four options those four options are encoded in this dummy variable or dummy table something like this so if our values are these one two two one four three each of these four options if the value is one it's one all our others are zero if the option is four the fourth option is one all others are zero and so on okay but <clears throat> usually when you encode you say dummy uh, like whatever the value of k is your dummy should be one less than that why because the first value is this intercept value first second third fourth so you don't or you will never create dummy variables of the same size in excel when we do like 501 we have to create those dummy variables r takes care of that okay so in r the only thing you need to check before fitting the model is whether it's stored as this factor or not right usually unordered factor and then you should see whether you're happy with these uh, categories that are assigned in that factorization meaning something like this so in the same data set in the survey we have a, a column for smoke or not so people who smoke heavy they never smoke they occasionally smoke or they regularly smoke okay and these are the number of students who do that so 189 are the good ones and the rest are so 11 are borderline cancer <laughs> right. but anyway uh, so first you check whether that variable is a factor or not if it's not you can change it to factor okay then you can check the levels and levels are unordered it says that i have one two three four levels right that's the only thing that you check and the command is the same lm the same thing same thing the only uh, command you need to remember is lm left hand is the dependent right is the independent and that's it right so for the three same cases that we have seen the normal continuous categorical binary or multi-level the command is the same how you interpret is a little different so now look at the result what, are, what does the result give us so there are one two three four levels you get three answers where is yeah there is no heavy ones meaning heavies are these right so if you are a heavy smoker your average height is 173 if you smoke never then 173 minus this thing okay and so on 
but look at this value what does this mean less than 1% meaning what this model is nonsense right yeah it's not significant is the right word it's not statistically significant um, if we look at the p-value it's pretty high the R squared is pretty low, so if we have to call a model bad, what's the hierarchy? Which which is more important to be listed first? Like this model is bad because the p value is high, or this model is bad because the R squared is super low, and then the p value is. High. First, you see the p values. So p values get preference, and then you see how fit is this model to the population. Because the model that you have found may be the perfect one for this given data. But does it apply to the population? Maybe not. Okay. Uh, so heavy is represented, blah, 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 and so on. Clear? Yes? Okay. Now, so there is no evidence that like smoking frequency blah blah affects student heights based on this sample of individuals right so that's what so I just wrote this so you guys when you go over you can remember so these were simple linear regressions now this is the new thing multiple linear models so we have two things the wind uh, writing hand span the other was we looked at sex which were both applicable to the heights, right? Now we are saying, what if we can, can we combine both of these together and see the effect on a person's height? Okay, so the question is looking al alone at a person's hand size, you get a specific height, right? Then in addition to that, if a person is male, will the height increase or not? It should, right? Based on our both models, we think that it should, right? So when we run a multiple model, you run it like this. So the left hand dependent stays same. The multiple ones are, you just add a plus and go on. Just like we did our coefficients and so on up until now. You, on the right hand side you can add as many independent variables as you want okay now look at the results but before looking writing hand is now 1.59 what was it before 3.1 so the value has decreased look for the sex of a male was 13.14 now it is both values have decreased why is that so they our equation comes to something like this so 137 is the normal plus 1.59 you cater for the hand span plus 9.4 if it's a male you just put one here if it's a female this value goes away but the main question is both values have decreased hand span almost half the other has decreased by four points as well what does that mean however if you look at the r value it's now 50 earlier it was 44 and 35 r r value has gone up so the first thing is it, this model is more applicable right more significant but both values have gone down what does that tell us Hmm? No. As you, add variables, as you add variables, you eliminate certain false positives in the previous model. You eliminate certain false positives that you had previously, meaning that when you got a large value for the hand span, then it was not only the hand span that was affecting a person's height. There was something else as well, which we have found that if you know the person's sex, then you say that person being a male 
and hand span size both together can we can estimate the height better right so as you have added something you've seen your model improve taking those false positives from those models away that's why sex alone had a high value when you both take these both together now you have a better result okay how do we comment on the intercept value so it's higher than the intercept value for just a hand but it's lower than the intercept value for uh, gender uh intercept is the same thing that it's taking from one giving to the other uh like taking so so the, but this is uh like like you said it's taking away those false positives okay first thing uh now let's do something else so in this one we have taken the hands plus sex plus smoke smoke we earlier found had no impact right now look at the r value almost the same almost 50% right however look at these values now those are essentially the same values right 1.6 9. something and so on and our r value has not improved but in fact is almost in the same 50 ballpark right so that is an indication that adding that extra variable of smoke is no no use or not beneficial to us which comes back to our original assessment that smoking does not have an effect on a person's height okay so we have verified that from this r value or adjusted r square value and that is all for this lecture questions lab is out there look at the lab done because it's it's a fairly simple lab if you understand this your lab is done okay But that is all for this.